everyone, Keegan here from Curious Engineering doing the fourth part of lab number one from the Altera University program. The digital series, I should clarify. So before we get started, I want to show you guys something cool that I found recently. It's called Autodesk Circuits. It's a really cool aesthetic way of looking at your circuits, and it goes well beyond just aesthetics. Aesthetics. Anyways, did a post on this, so I made just a basic Arduino uh, 16 by 2 LCD setup. And I want to show you uh, some cool features of this. Um, this offering. It's all free, which is uh, also another good reason for this. It has a built-in code editor, so technically you could introduce your Arduino code here. Um, I've, mon I've modified it just to say what I want it to say. And then if we build this circuit, you can uh, put in all your components to physically build it up, wire it up, and then you can simulate it. And it's awesome. You can, I just threw in a little oscilloscope where you can probe some of your signals, take a look at what's happening. But Pretty cool offering from them. They're traditionally a civil engineering or architecture building type uh, software company, so pretty interesting that they went this route. All right, anyways, let's uh, jump into our main purpose here. We are doing part four. So part four hinges on you understanding uh, the seven segment display as well as a concept of a decoder. In previous labs, we really just looked at multiplexers. We're going to continue to use a multiplexer. We're going to expand upon that in this design. So. If those concepts aren't too clear to you, make sure you go back to the previous videos or watch some other YouTube videos. Uh, specific to us, we are going to create uh, four different scenarios. In scenario one, we're going to output a the letter D, lowercase d, on our, our our output, and then in no sorry stop. In uh, scenario number two, we want to output a capital E, and scenario number three, a number one, and then in the last scenario, we want to turn everything off. Awesome. So that's high level what it is. Before we jump into the actual code and what this looks like, I'm going to do some background on a seven segment as well as um, walking through how to think about a decoder. So if those concepts make, sh make sense to you, uh, maybe skip to the end just to see what it looks like. But if not, then um, let's, let's go through some of those concepts. So as we look on our actual board, we're only going to use switch one and switch zero. And our hex, those are the only three components we're going to use in this design. And specific, all right, let's take a look at the seven segment. So the name uh, is exactly uh, what it is. It's seven different segments, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That creates our output display. And it's really important before you start using a seven segment, you need to know if it's common anode or common cathode. That will determine if you're going to drive different signals high or low. Uh, for this particular board, make sure you check out your data sheet. We have a common cathode. Uh, type setup. So what that means is when we drive a segment uh, logic level high, that will actually turn it off. So if I were to uh, say, hey, um, I want to drive zero, instead of turning on, it will actually turn it off and you'll just have the remaining segments um, on. So it's really important to remember that our, our strategy for this lab is we want to tackle, we want to understand that everything's going to be normally on and that we want to strategically turn off each segment to create our output. So what does that really mean? So to create our D, we're going to drive segments 0 and 5 off. We're going to drive segments 0 and 5 on, and that will, in fact, turn them off. So that will create our D. Um, a step to the E. In order to do that, our, our segments of interest are going to be 1 and 2. So we're going to drive those logic level high, and that will turn them off, and that will create our E. And finally, for our number 1, we are going to... And close enough. We're going to drive segment 0, 3, 4, 5, and 6 high, and that will turn them off, and that will create our 1. So I've created a little table just to kind of like rationalize your way through this. This is, this is a decoder, and your decoder will always change depending on what you're trying to do for it. But uh, we are having our inputs, and we want the output to be displayed. So based on switch, uh, switch, our switch inputs, our output should uh, display the following. So for the scenario when we have both switches off, we want segment 0 to be turned on, and we want segment 5 to be turned on, and that will create our D. If we have switch 1 off and switch 0 on, that will create our E, and in order to do that, we need to drive segments 1 and 2 off. Now when we have switch 1 on and switch 0 off, yada yada, I think you get the picture. In order to present our 1, these are all the segments. So just think through each segment that you actually need to turn off in order to, um, or based on your, your switch inputs. So 
And the last one's the easiest one. We're just going to turn every segment on, and it's going to uh, or drive every single segment logic level high, and that will in fact result in a nothing being spilled. So that's really input. You know, based on our inputs, what will the output look like? But if you start down that path, if you start to say, hey, um, switch one plus switch two equals uh, hex segment zero, you'll actually run into a, a you'll realize very quickly that that's not going to work. And that's because we, in order to code this, you really need to think about defining your inputs. Um, first, everything needs to be predefined, and that will result in your outputs. So, a uh, little bit of backwards thinking, but there's a cool way of uh, if we have our previous table and we just transpose that, that will set us up very nicely for walking through coding each segment, and that will um, result in what, what we really want to see on the board. So. If you look at the, if you compare these, maybe pause the video, compare these two, um, they will actually correspond to the exact same. They'll be equivalent. Um, so let's we need to individually code for each segment. So let's start with segment zero. Segment zero um, for our scenarios, and you need to say, okay, in what scenarios will this segment be turned off or driven logic level high? So we'll say, hey, assign hex zero, segment zero. Uh, the scenario when I want it to be turned logic level high is when I want both switches to be off. So that will turn that segment off. Or the other scenario is when you have switch one on and switch zero off. I want that for my R1 output also. So you capture that here. You say when switch one is on and when switch zero is off. And there's one more scenario, right? So we're saying, or the other scenario when you have one one. So that's captured by one one. Again, tilde means off. When there's no tilde, that means on. Okay, so just follow this table and step through each segment. So you step through segment one. Uh, you should define your your switch scenarios, and then finally, if you get to segment number six, then you'll once you've done all of that, you should have exactly what I have displayed here all of those scenarios so awesome so just some background on a kind of like way to think about a seven segment and how you actually code it uh, to create your decoder um, this is that is this essentially is our decoder um, awesome so now we've done some background let's jump into how we actually look look at this in quarters prime all right so let's uh, let's implement this project so as always start up your quarters prime Taking a little while. Okay. Now we want to create a new project. Yes. I'm going to browse to my folder. I'm going to create just a, a folder for this project. Create a new one. Lab 1, part 4. Okay. And we're going to call it the exact same thing. Lab 1, part 4. Okay, empty project, you know how this goes. Let's create our, let's input our device that we're going to target. Alright, that's the one we want. Again, we're not going to use any uh, specific tools. Double check everything looks good, got our correct target. Let's create this. Alright, let's let's input a new source. It's gonna be Verilog in this scenario. I have already written it. Oh, didn't copy. Why won't you paste? Interesting. Okay. Um, I have a bunch of notes in here. Uh, again if you're having issues uh, writing this on your own, definitely try to do that first. That's where you're gonna really learn. Um, if you have problems, you can always see the link in below in my GitHub. Just go directly to it. But uh, definitely give it a shot first. So we want to save it. Again, remember the naming convention. Really important. Um, yeah, again, uh, make sure, you know, as we remember back, our switches. Where are they? Our switches are inputs and the output is the hex, right? So. So we've defined here our inputs are the two switches and the outputs are our 
individual hex segments. We've done our decoder work beforehand, provide some notes if that's a little confusing, and then just a helpful reminder for each segment. So, Okay, I will uh, attempt to compile this. Again, it might take a while, so I will fast forward for you. Okay, it's finished. Um, so if we're back here, oh, let me turn this down. Okay, so I made an error. I know already off the bat there's going to be some warnings because we didn't do our pin assignments. We didn't do our pin assignments. Shame, shame. So it's definitely gonna not, not going to work, so we better uh, go ahead and do that. Let's do our assignment editor. And again, uh, I would go back to previous videos if this. Uh, um, doesn't make sense what we're doing in our console, but uh, we, we can individually go, but again, we don't want to do that. We want to be efficient. So we are going to use only switches 0 and 1, but we're going to use 6 or 7 segments, should I say, from hex 0. So again, it's going to be from your .qsf core setup file, um, video 1 or 2, one of those. Uh, definitely goes, for, goes through a, different, a number of different ways to actually get those files uh, for all of your pin assignments but um, yes now that we have that done let's uh, compile again so I will fast forward again okay we're back and let's check our errors as well Let me turn this down. okay so let's check out our warnings Make sure everything looks all right. Nothing's going to hinder us from progressing. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, let's see, just to double check. Okay, I think everything looks good here. So uh, let's uh, let's do some programming here. So we're going to program our board. Let's turn it on. Let's start with that. It's always important. Struggle. All right, and we're back. So let's uh, detect and let us add our output file. So we're going to do that. It's going to upload. Let's remove the useless one and let us program. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to uh, just walk through what is happening. So as you can see, uh, since our uh, our chart says uh, when we have no switches on, that should output a D, right? So that's what we see here. Uh, we see switch one and two; those are both off. Presents a D. And if we switch uh, switch one on, or sorry, let's walk through our table uh, more correctly. So if we do switch zero, um, that results in our E. Switch one, that results in our one. If we do both of them, nothing. So it's working perfectly and we are happy okay so that's all we had just showing that quick little introduction let's uh, jump into part five all right everybody take care